Hi, and welcome to this next video. We're on uh, the probability section of the course from statistics elements, and today we're going to be looking at discrete random variables. Now, it sounds a bit complicated, but hopefully you're going to realise that it's, it's not as scary as it sounds. So we're going to have a look at discrete random variables, talk about uh, the sum of probabilities for a discrete random variable, and then do some problem solving. And finally, we'll get on to looking at something called the uniform distribution. So to begin with, what we're going to do is go through those first three, which is looking at what a discrete random variable is, and then get on to some problem solving. So here we go. All right, a random variable is just a variable whose outcome depends on a random event. Okay, now that's not going to make a lot of sense to begin with, uh, but you'll see in a second what's going on with that. And hopefully you've seen the word discrete before uh, in the context of types of data. So a discrete value can only take certain types of value. So, for example, um, if I was counting the number of cows in the field, I can have 23 cows, 24 cows, but I can't have 23 and a half cows, for example. Bit of a rubbish example, but hopefully you get the gist with what I'm saying about discrete. Okay, so, yeah, I've come across these things before. So, let's have a look at um, a spinner being spun. There we go, and we've got a spinner. It's spun twice, and we're going to record or have a look at the products of the outcomes from each spin. So, you'll have seen these previously on a sample space where you've got it looking like that. And so if we start filling in our sample space, we get those values. So for example, if my first spin was a two and my second spin was a three, then the product I'm recording is a six. Now, and from there, um, you'd start kind of answering questions and, and doing some basic probability work. And that's the kind of stuff you've seen before, but we're gonna look at it slightly differently. So we're gonna describe this uh, as a distribution in a slightly different way. So I'm gonna start off by defining what our random variable is going to be. And our random variable, I'm going to call it capital X. The RV, random variable, is the product when a spinner is spun twice. So now we need to think about, okay, well, what values um, can our random variable take? And if you have a look at the table, clearly it can be a 1, 2, 3, 4. It can't be 5. It can be 6. can't be 7 or 8, but it can be 9. So, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, there we go. So there's our values that it can take. This uh, bottom line is going to be the probabilities. So what I've got here is I'm going to see using little x to say, okay, these are all the different possible values we could have. And what we're saying is, what's the probability that our random variable, capital X, is this value here? So what in this box here, I'm going to put the probability that capital X equals 1. This one here, what's the probability that capital X equals 2, and so on. So now I'm going to look at the table and say, well, what's the probability that I get a 1 from this situation? Well, clearly, there it is. That's going to be 1 ninth. What's the probability I get 2? That's going to be 2 ninths. Probability 3, that's 2 ninths again. 4, that goes back to being 1 ninth. The probability I get a 6 is 2 ninths. And then finally, 1 ninth. So what we've got is a table showing the probabilities of each outcome for our random variable. Okay, so that's just a different way of being able to describe the setup that we had over here. Okay, so there's our table again. Now, the alternative way we could do this is describe this as what we call a probability mass function, which is a kind of more algebraic way of describing it. So what we're going to do is describe it like that. So we're saying the probability that x equals x, there's that kind of notation again. Now, when x is 1, 4, or 9, the probability is 1 ninth, so we've got a value for it. And when it's 2, 3, and 6, the probability is 2 ninths. So hopefully, if you just take a moment and have a look at that definition there, essentially just matches what we've got in the table. And the third way we've got of doing it is as just a simple diagram. You might come across this. These don't pop up quite so often, but essentially, it's just almost like a bar graph, if you will, of the probabilities. So again, you've got three ways of describing pretty much the, the same thing there. The one that you tend to see the most are either kind of the tables, and you can do a lot of work with filling out these kind of tables or these descriptions down here. Now, last thing to notice, if you go back to the table, obviously because you've got um, all the possible outcomes here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, it can't be anything else. So if we add up the probabilities, 1 9 plus 2 9 plus 2 9 plus 1 9 plus 2 9 plus 1 9, those things there are going to sum to 1. And that would be the more technical way of writing that. So hopefully you've seen the summation notation before. The sum of the probabilities for each x is 1. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, a problem that involves discrete random variables. So we've got a random variable x. It's got a probability distribution that's shown in the table. And we've got it in terms of 
some value k so the first job we've got to do is work out what that value of k is so to do that what we're going to do is use that fact there the sum of the probability is one so we know if we add up these probabilities then they're going to sum to one so that allows me to write that simple equation so add up all the probabilities i get one clear do a bit of tidying i've got 10k there so i've got k is a value of one tenth okay Right, I'm going to go to part B. What's the probability that x is greater than 2? I've included this one just so we're highlighting this issue surrounding the inequality sign. Greater than 2 is those two. So it's because it's uh, specifically greater than 2, 2 is not included, so it's just x equals 3 and x equals 4. So since it's strictly greater than 2, the probability that x equals 2 is not included. So we know that this probability here, if k is 1 tenth, that's 4 tenths, that's 1 tenth. So we've got 4 tenths plus 1 tenth, so the probability that x is greater than 2 is 5 tenths. Part C, probability x equal less than 3. This time, because we've got this equal to or less than, that means that 3 is included. So we want those probabilities there. Add them all together, we get 9 tenths. It's 1 tenth, 4 tenths, 4 tenths. Now, it's just worth notice, we could also do uh, the probability x equals less than 3 by doing either of those two things so either we've got one minus the probability x is greater than three so x greater than three would just be that one or alternatively we could describe that as being one minus probability x equals four and you'll kind of get used to describing uh probability using the qualities and just kind of essentially flipping around and using this one minus thing quite a lot but you've just got to be a little bit careful with your equal to or less than and, and what that actually means and in this context x simply greater than three where's my mouse gone there it is this thing, x greater than 3, is actually exactly the same as saying x, in this context, is just equal to 4. Right, so, uh, again, same calculator. We've got 1 minus the 1 tenth. There's our answer, 9 tenths, same as we had previously. And on we go. So, we've got another example. Joe rolls a bias dice and records the number of rolls required to get a 6. So, he keeps going until he gets a 6. And he's going to roll this thing a maximum of 4 times. Now, it says, given the probability of requiring three rolls is 18 over 125, and the probability of getting the six is rational, find probability six, and then we've got to complete the probability distribution table and do some calculations. So, here we go. So, find the probability uh, that he gets a six. So, we need that kind of, that biased probability of rolling a six. Well, if we say, okay, well, let's let that value equal P, and if he needs three rolls, because that's the information we're given here, then he must have rolled not six on his first and second roll. So he must have had two failures. So if his probability of getting a six is that, then his probability of not getting a six would be one minus that. And so what that means is now we say, well, if we, if we put these three things together, say, well, he must have got not the six twice. So that times by not six again, then times by the fact he gets a six. So those three probabilities all times together. And that gives him the 18 over 125. So now what we've got is an equation to solve in terms of p so what i'm going to do is i think i'm going to move the 125 across to this side and expand my bracket there we go and now do some multiplying out and a bit of rearranging and you end up with a cubic and you've got your uh solve an equation editor on also a menu on your calculator so you can just kind of bang those values into the the cubic one so it's a polynomial degree three and it spits out that value there and you've got two other values but those two other solutions uh, we're not rational values and we said in the question that the probability of getting the six had to be rational so we end up with a value of p is two fifths okay right on we go so let's complete the table so our random variable is going to be um, how many rolls were required so we've got a maximum of four times so he's gone we could have one roll two roll three rolls or four and to be honest for the sake of complete, i've kind of put this this one in at the end there um, and I'll talk a little bit about why I've put that there uh, when we get to it. So here we go. Probability he get a 6 on his first roll is 2 fifths. That's what we had from last time. Probability that x is 2 is going to be failed first of all and then get a 6. So that's going to be 3 fifths times by 2 fifths. So that's 6 over 25. The probability requiring 3 rolls, we already had that one, 18 over 125. Probability of requiring 4 rolls, that meant he had to have 3 failures first. And then he had a success, so not six, not six, not six, times by getting a six, so that's that one. Okay, now the reason I put this one in here is, you'll notice that kind of, if you add up these probabilities, 
at the moment they are not going to uh, add up to one because you've got it could keep going and keep going and keep going so we want the problem i'm going to include the probability that we need more than four rolls and i'm going to simply do that by saying well it's got to be one minus those things added together so the probability that x is greater than four is one minus the probability that x equal less than four and so that gives us 81 over 625 so now all these values will add together to make one because it's a probability distribution function and that's um, a criteria of those things okay so on we go to part c probability that x is greater than two greater than two doesn't include two so we're going to be looking at those ones there so probability x equals three x equals four and probability x is greater than four alternatively you could have done one minus probability x equal less than two so you could have done those two added together and done one minus there we go so there's those three nine over 25 if you just want to do a check that one minus these two added together does actually equal nine over 25 that might be a good idea as well but there we go there's our probability that x is greater than two and finally an expression for the probability of requiring n rolls well this one has got a real structure to it because we've got to get to the nth roll we've got to have failures beforehand so we must have had for example if i pick my four rolls to get to that one i must have had three failures for three rolls i must have had two failures so hopefully we can see that to get to the nth roll we must have had n minus one failures so failure not a six so i've got three fifths times three fifths times three fifths times three fifths and just keep going so i've got n minus one lots of those and then at the end of it the last roll must be my success so i've got three over fifths of pi n minus one times my two fifths now that's a, a kind of real structured setup and that thing's actually referred to as a geometric distribution um it's not technically examined as such um on the uh, the level mass course it used to be but it's, it's not on there anymore um but they can still structure questions like this around discrete random variables getting to think about the structure of how that actually works okay right and the last thing we're going to do in this section is have a look at an exam style question so again we've got a bias spinner can only land on those four outcomes and the random variable represents uh the number of uh the number that the spinner lands on after a single spin so it's just the, the outcome of each individual spin and we've got this slightly confusing looking definition it says the probability that x equals r is the same as the probability that x equals r plus two when r is one or two and it gives us some information okay so that's all looking a little bit scary a little bit confusing with all these different letters flapping around all over the place i haven't even got to this thing why down here we'll worry about that in part b let's have a look at part a to begin with so we know that our random variable is one two three or four at the possible values it can take and we're given that the probability that x is two it lands on a two is 0 0.35 so let's put that in first of all and let's now use this piece of information up here so if we know that x equals 2 is 0 0.35 r can be 1 or 2 so if we say like, okay if r is 2 then these two statements are exactly the same thing and if r is 2 then this thing here is the probability that x equals 4 and so therefore with ill this is doing is telling us that the probability that x equals 2 is the same as x equals 4 so that value there has got to be 0 0.35 as well right the next part of it is saying well if r equals one then using this bit up here that means the probability r equals one has got to be the same as probability r equals three and i've just called these two probabilities p and because we know that the sum of the probabilities is one that means these two things have got to add up to what's left over after i've got rid of these so kind of 0 0.35 0 0.35 to 0.7 so that means 2p has got to be 0 0.3 and so therefore p has got to be 0 0.15 and there you go there's your completed probability distribution it's actually quite a, a simple distribution um but like i said just made it a little bit more complex by all this this kind of schmizzle up here but hopefully that that now makes sense so that's part a done on we go and let's have a look at part b so we've got this y minus x thing and we've got this definition of y so all that's really doing is just redefining um, a value for a random variable so we're told that y is 12 over x so what i'm going to do is come up with a value for y and say well if y is 12 over x and x is 1 that means that value there has got to be a 12 and when x is 2 that means y equals 6 when x is 3 it's 4 
on axis four is three. So all it's doing is just kind of re, uh, redefining the outcomes that we can get. Now, what we've got is the probabilities. So, so the, what it's saying now is if we've got y is 12, the probability of getting y equals 12 is 0.15. The probability of getting y is 6 is 0.35. So those associated probabilities are still exactly the same. And we want the probability that y take away x is greater than 4. So where have I got y take away x greater than 4? Well, let's have a look at it. Sorry, less, greater than 4. Sorry, let's try that again. y minus x equal less than 4. So we want where's y minus x equal to or less than 4. So if I go here and do 12 minus 1, is that less than 4? No, it's not. 6 minus 2, is that equal to or less than 4? Well, 6 minus 2 is 4. So that one, yep, that one's okay. We'll have that. 4 minus 3, yep, we'll have that. 3 minus 4, is that equal to or less than 4? It's minus 1. So yep, we'll have that as well. So the values where y minus x equal less than 4 are these 3. So the probability that that happens is simply those three probabilities added together, which is 0 0.85.